Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Friday Night Smackdown Review. And tonight's Smackdown was from the Performance Center. The WWE Performance Center in Orlando. And originally Smackdown was supposed to take place from the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit tonight. But due to the uh, big news that's going around that we are hearing every day on the news. We can't get away from this. Due to the coronavirus, WWE had to move SmackDown from uh, the Detroit Arena, the Little Seas Arena, to Orlando uh, to be at the Performance Center. And the show went on tonight with no crowds. There was no crowds for uh, the SmackDown tonight. And it's going to be like that uh, when this whole uh, virus is you know, dead and gone. Hopefully it's by next month because this whole coronavirus is getting out of control. TV shows have halted production because of this. Uh, sports, the NBA... Uh, was had to be suspended because of this. The MLB suspended uh, all their uh, open and day games because of this. This whole coronavirus is making uh, this whole uh, world, you know, go absolutely nuts. It is getting out of control, and this virus needs to fucking die. It really does. But, so yeah, so SmackDown went on tonight with no crowd from the Performance Center. And I have to say, watching it without a crowd, this was really weird. I thought it was very eerie and weird. You know, because we're all used to, you know, seeing crowds at the events every single week. But because there was no crowd, uh, WWE had to uh, foresee SmackDown and rely on the talent. Uh, uh, rely on the talent that they have and not on the audience because the crowd wasn't there. So WWE ha couldn't rely on shocking you know, the crowds. So... They have they had to rely on the stories, the commentary, the superstars, and that's what you know they basically had to do because there's no crowd. And this Monday on Raw, same thing. Monday on Raw is going to be taking place on Monday at the Performance Center. It's not going to be any crowd, and. Can you imagine? Because Monday at 316 day, Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to be on Monday Night Raw. Can you imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin coming out on Monday Night Raw this Monday to no crowd reaction? Just got the shivers there. Just got the shivers just make me think of what we're going to see on Monday when Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out. It's going to be very, very weird. But let's get on with the SmackDown review. For the most part, this was, you know, a decent show. And the show opened up tonight with Triple H. Triple H uh, had a mic. And he ended up talking to uh, the camera, talking to the folks at home. He introduced himself. He welcomed the viewers to the WWE Performance Center. Which, the Performance Center is uh, where these talents uh, that, you know, they find on the indies. And, you know, they give them a shot at trying to be in the WWE. They train there. You know, some of the... Uh, the talent that were in the Indies, if they bring them to WWE, they train there to see if you know they can make it and go to NXT and 
you know, in the foreseeable future, might make it on uh, Raw, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown. So Triple H ends up going on, and he talked about the state of the art facility. He ended up saying about how many of the top superstars have gone through the Performance Center. He mentioned superstars, you know, Sasha Banks, Bailey, you know, Corbin. You know, all those uh, superstars have gone through the Performance Center. So Triple H ended up saying tonight they return, but not to train, but to do what they do better than anyone else in the world. And that is entertain. So Triple H ended up saying that this will be different than anything we've seen before. He ended up saying, he ended up saying sit back and relax. Try to forget about the world around, you know, us if we can. You know, him, you know, talking about, you know, the whole uh, craziness of the coronavirus. And he ended up saying, let WWE do what they do best. Let that, let us put a smile on our faces. And then he welcomed us to SmackDown, to Friday Night SmackDown on Fox. And then the camera ended up showing us the empty chairs, had the smack, had the ring there, the blue lasers were going around. And we have Michael Cole, uh, also also on commentary, of course. He welcomes us to Friday Night SmackDown, hypes up the show. And what I really liked on commentary tonight was not only was it Michael Cole there. Triple H ended up uh, joining on commentary tonight, which was awesome. And I have to say, this pairing of Triple H and Michael Cole was great. You know, but, you know, Corey Graves, of course, wasn't there. So it, it was good that we got Triple H, you know, instead of Corey Graves tonight. It was a change uh, for once. And you could tell that Triple H and Michael Cole were enjoying themselves uh, tonight and tell possibly that Michael Cole didn't have Vince McMahon's uh, voice in his ear tonight because I thought Michael Cole tonight he did a decent job on commentary so it's like you know whenever uh, Vince McMahon is not in Michael Cole's ear he does a decent job on commentary and, you know, when he's with uh, Triple H, you could tell Michael Cole could say what he wants on commentary. So I really liked the pair and really enjoyed the pair of Triple H and Michael Cole on commentary. So then Sasha Banks and Bailey came out. They came out. They started uh, ready to talk trash to the crowd. But they realized there was no crowd there. So they walk down the ramp, get on the mic. Both of them stop in front of Michael Cole and Triple H at the commentary table. They end up saying how they decide to kick off the show. And it doesn't matter how big the crowd is because it's still their house. So Bailey ended up asking Triple H where Paige is because Paige wanted to get some answers on, you know, why Bailey is acting like this, why, why Bailey's acting like this. But uh, Michael Cole ended up saying that Paige uh, was having travel issues. And Sasha Banks and Bailey uh, couldn't believe it. And Triple H was joking about, you know, being sick of all these excuses. And both Sasha and Bailey went on about Paige uh, being jealous. 
just like every other woman. And out came Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Alexa and uh, Nikki Cross, they end up talking about how they've been looking for the good, for the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane. They end up saying that they might have to go to Raw. And they say they're also tired of Sasha and Bailey. So, you know, they both all teamed both bicker. They want to have a match. If Sasha and Bailey, you know, wanted to have a match. So Bailey ends up calling Nikki Cross a little idiot. And she ends up calling for a referee to come out. So then we had the match. Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. And the match itself, you know, it was okay. It was an okay women's match. Nikki Cross ended up starting off the match with Bailey. Uh, they were going back and forth. And Alexa ends up uh, going to the top. Alexa came in. She dropped Bailey in the corner uh, with a slap. Sasha ended up running outside, pulls uh, Bailey to, you know, safety out of the ring. And then uh, we saw uh, when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Alexa ended up getting uh, double teamed in the corner by Sasha and Bailey. And then what I really liked was the commentary here between Michael Cole and Triple H. Because they end up joking and explaining to the viewers about the Performance Center. So later on, we had uh, Asuka appear. She ends up taking Alexa down on the floor. And it led to Sasha taking control of the match because it was Sasha and uh, Nikki Cross in the ring. Sasha ended up applying the uh, bank statement on Nikki Cross. Nikki ended up tapping out. So Sasha and Bailey end up winning the match because of the distraction from Asuka. Post match, we had Asuka uh, end up taunting uh, Alexa and Nikki, uh, Nikki Cross. And then on commentary, Triple H ended up joking about Asuka. Running through the running in through the crowd, <laughs> but Triple H, you know, he has some uh, some jokes on commentary. Uh, there was a point where Triple H and Michael Cole uh, joked around about uh, Mar Ronaldo uh, in the match. But uh, then. We had, uh, after that, you know, so after that Sasha Banks, Bailey, uh, Alexa, Nikki Cross match. Uh, but all in all, it was an okay match. But after that, we had uh, Roman Reigns uh, interview. Michael Cole was in the ring. He introduces Roman. Roman came out. Michael Cole ended up asking Roman how weird it was making the entrance to the ring. Roman ended up talking about, you know, how this being a business of reactions. He said it was weird and cool. He ended up saying that he's glad to be back in the performance center. So Roman ended up talking about his past year and how he's been blessed. He says he's back in familiar territory. And that it's good to be back in the main event. So Michael Cole ended up asking uh, about, he ended up asking Roman about Goldberg and their match at WrestleMania. Which, from what I'm hearing now, uh, WrestleMania might be uh, called off due to the, uh, the virus. If they were to do WrestleMania, I would say... They should do it in the summertime. Have it in either June or July. Have it in one of those months. Hopefully it's July. 
Then we get to have WrestleMania. And then WrestleMania, after WrestleMania, we could, you know, go into the build for SummerSlam. So I like to see uh, WrestleMania, you know, maybe maybe in July, if I had to choose. So then we'll, we got WrestleMania, and then we got then we'll get SummerSlam. You know, two of the big four pay per views. But yeah, I just had to get that uh, little news out about WrestleMania because there was talks that you know it might be that it might be pushed back. But who knows? We still have to get, you know, news about, you know, if it's officially, if they're officially going to, uh, you know, hold off on uh, WrestleMania. So then uh, Roman ended up going on about him having great respect for Goldberg. He ends up calling Goldberg an icon. So Roman ended up saying that Goldberg is a part-timer. And, you know, Roman goes on about all he thinks of 24-7 and 365, 365 days is WWE. And he says he's eaten from the WWE table his whole life and that he's groomed for this. He ends up saying Goldberg isn't ready for him. Roman ended up saying that he's busted his ass and mastered his craft. He ended up saying when it comes to the main event of WrestleMania, he will whoop Goldberg's ass and take back his Universal Championship. And Michael Cole ended up thanking Roman. The interview ends. And pretty much that was basically that. But it was a decent uh, interview with Roman uh, from, you know, with Mike, with Mike Cole interviewing Roman. So then we had Kayla Braxton. She was backstage. She was with Cesaro. Cesaro ends up introducing the new Intercontinental Champion, who, of course, is Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn ends up coming, of course, comes along with uh, Nakamura. Caleb Brax ends up saying that they're not scheduled for this interview. So Sami ends up disagreeing. So Kayla ends up saying they've been bumped from this interview. So Kayla Braxton ends up introducing her real uh, guest who was Jeff Hardy. So Jeff Hardy ended up making his return to TV on SmackDown tonight, which is cool. A long while since we've seen Jeff Hardy, and we all know why Jeff Hardy was, you know, out of action and off TV. So Jeff Hardy ends up telling Caleb Braxton that he's as healthy and hungry as he's ever been. He says he's done a lot of soul searching over the past few months and found a lot of important things. He says one of those things is that he has a lot more to do in WWE. So then Corbin, King Corbin, King Baron Corbin, King Baron Corbin comes and interrupts. He ends up mocking Jeff Hardy. Corbin ends up saying not everyone is happy that Hardy is back. No, Corbin, we're not happy to see you on SmackDown once again for another week. For another week. So Corbin ends up saying that things have changed around here. He ends up saying SmackDown is now run by a ben a Benevolent king who keeps peasants like Hardy in a place. Yeah. Okay, it's not run by you. SmackDown is not run by you. So Corbin ends up uh, joking about Jeff Hardy having trouble with his 
alcohol and his DUI charges. So Jeff Hardy ended up saying uh, he has a big match tonight. And he's surprised Corbin hasn't heard. So Corbin ends up asking Jeff Hardy, who is it against? Jeff Hardy ended up saying, you. So it was Jeff Hardy versus Corbin uh, later on in the night. So Jeff Hardy ended up walking off. And now we hear a guitar playing. Of course, it's Borlias. It's Elias. And him and Corbin have some words. And Corbin, and Corbin wasn't happy. So... Elias went to perform his song. Corbin ended up walking off and doesn't want to listen to, you know, Elias's, you know, Leah's song. So Elias ended up uh, saying, Corbin has no idea what's coming. Now it's basically that, but good to see Jeff Hardy back. Good to see him, you know, well after everything, you know, that he went through. And then when SmackDown uh, came back from uh, the commercial, uh, Triple H ended up rejoining Michael Cole on a commentary. Triple H ended up joking that he's the only guy who can receive a promotion and a demotion because there, because uh, Triple H ended up getting a uh, demotion on a uh, last night because uh, it was uh, reported in a article. And Triple H mentioned that, you know, everybody was complaining about Michael Cole's commentary. And I would see uh, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan was uh, in the back. He walks up to Drew Gulak. Daniel Bryan ended up saying that he's been looking for Gulak. And Gulak doesn't believe him. And he goes to leave. Daniel Bryan ends up, you know, stopping Drew Gulak. He ends up uh, giving uh, Gulak praise for the match, for his performance at Elimination Chamber. So Bryan ends up saying that he's willing to learn if Gulak is still willing to teach. And so Sami Zayn, Cesaro, and Nakamura walk up. Sami Zayn was laughing, and he brings up how Daniel Bryan uh, turned down his invite to join their group, you know, a few weeks ago. So Sammy went on and says that Daniel Bryan has now been reduced to asking for tips from a nobody. So Daniel Bryan ended up stepping up to Sami Zayn. Cesaro gets in his way. So Dan Bryan says his issue is with Sammy, is with Sammy Zane, not Cesaro. Cesaro ended up saying that if Daniel Bryan has an issue with Sammy, he has one with him as well. So Daniel Bryan ends up uh, saying if that's a challenge, Sammy ends up saying, it is. And Dan Bryan ends up telling uh, them to meet him in the ring. So Dan Bryan ends up uh, walking off. Gulak ends up stepping up and he ends up having a few words uh, for Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn uh, like indicated that Cesaro and Nakamura will be wrestling uh, Drew Gulak and Daniel Bryan. Pretty much that was basically that. And then we had a replay, a rerun of the uh, tag team Elimination Chamber match from Elimination Chamber uh, this past Sunday, where we saw, you know, John Morrison and The Miz retain uh, the titles, SmackDown uh, titles, where they defeated uh, The New Day, The Usos. 
Luch House Party, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode, and Heavy Heavy Machinery, which I stated in uh, my Elimination Chamber review that the elimination, the Tag Team Elimination Chamber match was very underwhelming. And the only part that was uh, decent was when Heavy Machinery was in the match. That was basically that. Overall, it was very underwhelming. So we had that match play again. And I guess the reason why they play is because WWE had uh, nothing else you know, to put on the show tonight because you know, the plans end up changing because of the whole you know, coronavirus. So we saw the Tag Team Elimination Chamber match again. And when the match was over, we went back to the Performance Center. And we saw John Morrison and The Miz in the ring. The Miz ended up bragging about uh, the win at Elimination Chamber. And he ended up saying how him and Morrison are still winning titles, you know, years later. So, both John Morrison and The Miz issue challenges for anyone to speak now if they don't believe they are the best if they don't believe these are the best two at what they do. So they joke about some of their bad movie projects, you know, being good. And Miz ended up saying, you know, there will be no booing and no you suck chance. So they go on bragging about you know, being champions, they raise their titles in the air. They tell er, they told everyone to be jealous. And there we go. And then they go, hey, John Morrison and the Miz. Hey, hey, ho, ho. You know, Miz Morrison and Miz. Hey, hey, ho, ho. That whole stupid corny shit. That was that. Then we had Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro, you know, which was a decent match. And Daniel Bryan came out with uh, Drew Gulak. And Daniel Bryan ended up uh, coming down the ramp you know, with Drew Gulak. He tried to lead a yes chant. And he was like, Daniel Bryan was probably like, oh, there's nobody here. So, then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Michael Cole uh, was, uh, you know, filling in as, you know, the uh, the cameraman. Well, Triple H was uh, filming Michael Cole, joking about filling in as a cameraman, which was funny though, because Triple H was holding up the uh, the camera. <laughs> it was funny though. So Michael Cole ended up saying that. You know, announcing that Rob Gronkowski was, you know, in talks with the WWE. And it's, official, and it's official that Rob Gronkowski signed with the WWE, which I'm like, why? Why? What a waste of a sign of a signee. What a waste of a contract to give Rob Gronkowski. Oh, because he's, oh, Mojo Raleigh's friend. Are you all excited to see Rob Gronkowski in the WWE? If you are, there is something wrong with you. I don't know who is happy that Rob Gronkowski has signed with the WWE. So, we have Mojo Raleigh. He was at the announce table because, of course, he's Friends with Gronkowski. Mojo ended up saying that he talked to Gronkowski earlier. And he ended up saying that the rumors are true. Gronkowski is coming to WWE. Mojo ended up saying nothing has been signed yet. But Gronkowski will be here next week. Oh, great. Oh, great. That's something to... Look forward to, right, for next week? No. 
Absolutely no. So Mojo ends up saying that he will be here next week, even though he is a Raw superstar. So then we had Cesaro and Nakamura come out along with uh, Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn ended up joining Michael Cole and Triple H on commentary. Match uh, got on the way. The match was back and forth. Cesaro ends up uh, turning the match around, unloading on Daniel Bryan. Gulak was out there at ringside. Cesaro ended up uh, unloading on Daniel Bryan in the corner. Laying forearms and uppercuts to Daniel Bryan. Then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back, Cesaro ended up uh, dominating on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan ended up fighting uh, back. Bryan ended up, Daniel Bryan ended up rolling up Cesaro for the win. So there you go. Daniel Bryan ended up winning the match. Then post-match, Nakamura comes in. Starts pounding away on Daniel Bryan. Drew Gulak ended up coming in to make the save. But they end up being down on uh, Gulak, Nakamura, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn. So Drew Gulak ended up getting tossed into the ring steps. Daniel Bryan ended up doing a suicide dive uh, to Nakamura. But yet it didn't end up uh, connecting. You end up sending uh, him into the ring post. And that was pretty much basically that. So then uh, it was announced that, of course, Rob Ronkowski is going to be here next week. And there is also going to be a contract signing between Roman and Goldberg next week. Oh, great. You know, like, who's excited to see Rob Gronkowski next week? Who's excited to see a contract signed between Roman and Goldberg? Which, if WrestleMania does in fact take place on April 5th and not gets pushed uh, back, yeah, we're interested in seeing a contract signed with Roman and Goldberg where that match is going to be shit on by the fans who are attending WrestleMania. Oh boy, I can't wait to see that crowd shit all over that match. Cannot wait. Then we had Jeff Hardy versus Corbin. This was a short match. You know, it was good to see Jeff Hardy back in the ring. Corbin ended up attacking uh, Jeff Hardy before, you know, the bell rang. He was taking control. He was... Uh, taking Jeff Hardy out to the floor. Corbin ended up uh, being Jeff Hardy up on you know on the floor. Throws him back into the ring. He was telling Jeff Hardy to get up. Bell rang. Jeff Hardy then took control. And you know, it was back and forth between the both of them. And Corbin ended up uh, catching Jeff Hardy. Ended up in the deep six. Jeff Hardy ended up kicking out at two. Corbin was arguing with the referee. And we, during this match, we had Elias on commentary along with uh, Triple H and Michael Cole. I'm like, oh, great. We got to hear Elias on commentary. So Elias then ended up standing on top of the announce table. Starts playing his guitar. So Elias was distracting Corbin. That was when Jeff Hardy took advantage of uh, the match of the uh, distraction uh, from Elias to Corbin. And he ends up hitting a new uh, move or a new name for a finisher. And that is called the Twist of Fury. Yeah, now, now it's uh, Jeff Hardy's new uh, signature move, the Twist of Fury, as they're calling it. 
So Jeff Hardy ended up hitting the Twist of Fury. He went to the top and delivered the Swanton Bomb on Corbin for the win. So there you go. Jeff Hardy ended up winning the match. Like I said, good to see Jeff Hardy back uh, in the ring. It's been a long while since we've seen him. So really happy that uh, he's back. And then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Triple H uh, was back on the mic as, you know, he was in the, uh, the beginning of uh, the show. He ended up saying that he hopes we have enjoyed this historic edition of SmackDown. So he went on and says, we are missing what makes the show important, the fans. He ended up saying, well, they not... While they're not here physically, they are here. He also says that the superstars performing, you know, he mentions the superstars performing like they would for the fans. And he ends up saying WWE has truly earned the right to say what they say in the top of their shows. Then, now, forever. So, Triple H... Always uh, delivering uh, on the mic. You know, Triple H, you know, cares for, uh, you know, the business, cares for the company. So, and, he does, and he does a job more better than fucking Vince McMahon. So then we had Michael Cole. He was in the ring and he introduces John Cena. John Cena was, of course, announced for uh, SmackDown. So, John Cena says it's all business. And he tells Michael Cole to get to it. So, John Cena ends up thanking the fans watching at home. He ends up shouting them out. So, Michael Cole ends up bringing up The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, to John Cena. And how... Bray Wyatt said uh, John Cena's previous uh, win over him at WrestleMania 30 led to the birth of The Fiend. So John Cena wasn't sure how to respond uh, to someone who blames their failure on him. And he says a lot of people have said to him how he is the reason for their failure. He says, now we can add Bray Wyatt uh, to that list. John Cena up saying that Bray Wyatt got lazy after the WrestleMania loss. He ends up saying that Bray Wyatt is his own biggest enemy. And he went on and dismissed the idea that he never lo loses and just bruises others. So... Cena ended up uh, talking about people wanting to be on top, but then, you know, them want to get lazy. He was like, how does he respond to someone who blames him for their failures? He gives them a AA. So, Michael Cole ends up showing us, you know, John Cena's uh, SmackDown return, which was in Boston, and his promo on you know, on WrestleMania, going on without him. Because you end up saying, you know, WrestleMania spots are earned, not given. So Michael Cole ended up asking why Cena would antagonize Bray Wyatt after saying what he did. So John Cena says he didn't antagonize. He accepted a challenge for Bray, from Bray Wyatt. So John Cena went on about how the company needs to invest in its future. He ends up saying he does not feel like Bray Wyatt is a part of that future. He ends up saying guys like Drew, like Drew McIntyre, Matt Riddle, Tommaso Ciampa, Rhea Ripley, Velveteen Dream are the future. And he ends up saying that WWE should invest in those talents. And ask why we continue to give fifth and six chances to people who ask, you know, what about me when times get hard? So 
Well, Cena says he accepted Bray Wyatt's challenge, so he can take Bray Wyatt out of the equation. He says their WrestleMania match won't be a match to steal the show. He says their WrestleMania match will be brutal, will be gruesome, and also uncomfortable. Cena says he will do what should have been accomplished six years ago. He will end the hype of the most overhyped and overprivileged superstar in existence in Bray Wyatt. So then we hear Bray Wyatt laughing from the empty seats because the camera panned over and there was Bray Wyatt. So Bray Wyatt uh, had a mic. He hops over the barricade. Bray Wyatt says he's glad that John Cena is here. He knows. So Bray Wyatt enters the ring and says, it's good to see Cena. He says, you know, he's doing great now. He's a big movie star in Hollywood. And Bray Wyatt says, most can imagine what it would be like to be Cena for one day. Bray Wyatt says that Cena has them all wrong. Says he's not sick. Cena is the one who's sick. Bray Wyatt says he knows why Cena came here. And he knows that Cena doesn't really give a damn about the future. So Bray says Cena doesn't care who he has to squash or bury on his way. And that Cena just wants the spotlight says Cena is addicted to the spotlight. Bray Wyatt ended up saying six years ago, Cena took something from him. Wyatt said he thought about it so much that it drove him crazy. He ended up saying that the voices in his head never stopped. And then something magical happened. Bray Wyatt says he stopped fighting the voices one day and then started uh, listening to him, to them. Sorry, listen to the voices. It says they took his crooked little world and turned it into a majestic funhouse. Of course, the, uh, the Firefly funhouse. So Bray Wyatt ended up saying that Cena broke him and the Fiend put him back together. He says at WrestleMania, it's going to be a slaughter. And he says, Cena just doesn't know it yet. So Bray Wyatt was in uh, John Cena's face and he was like, let me in, John. So then after Bray Wyatt said that, we saw the screen flashed with, you know, the Fiend. And Bray Wyatt let out, you know, his laugh. The screen went black. And Bray Wyatt's laugh echoed over the Performance Center, and that was basically how SmackDown went off the air. But Cena's promo, I thought, was uh, really good. Really enjoyed it. And I said SmackDown was just eerie and weird uh, tonight without a crowd. Let's see what WWE, what WWE will do with my Night Raw this Monday. So hopefully Raw will be you know a decent show. So because we got Stone Cold Steve Austin coming on uh, this Monday. Yeah so anyways that's it for uh, the SmackDown review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. And uh, definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and until next video, I'll see you all later.